The tributes to Dr. King are taking many forms, including marches, rallies, speeches, and musical performances. A local civil rights activist who marched with Dr. King and heard him speak is sharing his memories of the civil rights leader with Eyewitness News reporter David Spunt. My poor little children one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. When Martin Luther King Jr. said those famous words in Washington, D.C., Norville Reese, a young civil rights activist, stood in a huge crowd of strangers with one goal in common, equality. I mean, everyone was just riveted. First time I ever heard him speak, and he was just masterful. Now 84 and living in Bucks County for decades, Reese invited us into his home to share memories of a man he misses to this day. This country, I think, is in badly in need of, of his voice right now. Reese was so inspired by King, he chartered a plane from Philadelphia to join the civil rights leader on his third march from Selma to Montgomery. It's where he encountered what he calls a vicious crowd, watching, screaming, even throwing things at those marching. Right. People were very nasty on the sidelines. I've never heard so many vulgarities uh, yelled at people just walking by. Reese is a proud Quaker and believes it's his Quaker roots that sent him to Dr. King's side. I was raised to believe that all people are equal are born equal, created equal, regardless of religion or race or country of origins. He saw him say, I have a dream in 1963. In 1965, he marched with him in Selma. But it was in 1967 here at the old Robert Morris Hotel in Philadelphia that Norville Reese spent several hours with the civil rights icon. In person, he was, uh, he was very direct. He was uh, uh, kind of all business in a way. My impression was that he was kind of all business, very focused. Uh, you knew where he stood, a uh, good strategic thinker. These are photographs from that day. They hang proudly in Reese's office, but he took them down to show us. He says that day he, King, and a few others planned a poverty march for the following spring. But King never made it. He was dead before the march took place. Reese went to King's funeral in Atlanta. 50 years to the day King died, and this civil rights fighter is proud of leaving his life up north to march down south for what was and is right in all directions. I did, and I would do it again. <laughs> in Philadelphia, David Spunt, CBS3 Eyewitness News.